So in this video, I'm going to be going over the keyword gap analysis tool using SEO PowerSuite. As you can see in the middle here, keyword gap allows finding competitors keywords that you do not rank for. You may compare your domain up to five competitors per project. Learn more about this method here, which I also have opened up in a, another window, which we'll get to. The cool thing is you can actually follow along with me. If you like, I will leave a link down below. And if you click that, SEO PowerSuite actually comes with a free plan and they are very generous when it comes to the amount of features and perks that you get. With that being said, what we want to do is we have our specific domain here. We have one competitor and like it says, we can add up to five. So if you wanted to utilize that, you can. I'm just going to make it easy and stick with one. And from my experience, when you're doing any type of keyword gap, I would recommend going with a domain that's around your authority. For example, if you just started a website and you're in like the entrepreneur business, say niche, that's kind of your field. And then you put in entrepreneur.com. They're pretty much just going to have every keyword out there just because there's such a huge gap where if you just started compared to a site that has so much authority. Meanwhile, you can go for a lot of the better low hanging fruit type of keywords where if you're going against a competitor, it's kind of around your age in terms of how long they've been around content and of course authority. So something to keep in mind, Mark and blog is a blog that's very similar to mine, probably a little bit more authority, but I know we have a lot of similar content. So that's why I'm going to be rolling with that. You can also change around these settings up here. If you want to do USA and Google, we have desktop or mobile organic is going to be good. Top 10 is cool. Of course, domains and subdomains, that's going to be fine. If I open this up, you're going to see how we can actually change things around a little bit more. We talked about entering our competitor's website, which we did. We just want one, which is going to be fine. Intersect mode, you can see there's going to be multiple right here that you can utilize. I'm just going with this one here with competitor keywords. It says any competitor, but not your site. So going back here, only your site, your site and any competitor and all competitors and so on and so forth as it goes from there. Adjust targeted settings. This is going to be a little bit different. Like I showed you, that's on top. They just happened to switch around in the previous version. You can filter the results by type and rank, which I also went over. And that's just going to be some extra settings if you want to add negative keywords, which are going to be right here. With that in mind, let's click on search. And once it's done loading, I will get right back to you. All right, so it is done. And I believe there was, let's see, 303 results. Not too bad. As you can see, we're going to be looking at some of the number of searches, which is going to, it's going to be sorted by. So some of the juiciest ones, obviously. We have their specific blog and what the rank's going to be. We have the competition. We have the cost per click, some of the juiciest ones. And of course, keyword difficulty. Keep in mind when it comes to keyword difficulty, it's always going to be a ballpark. And that's pretty much for any SEO tool I've ever used. Some are going to be a little bit more challenging. Some are going to be a lot more easier. Some are going to need way more backlinks than you think. And some are just going to rank much easier overall. And that's always a good thing, right? When that happens. So this is kind of something that you get better at the more SEO you do. I call it kind of having like an SEO sense. It's more of an instinct where you can see, all right, what type of website is this? How long have they been around? How many backlinks are there? Who else is ranking in the top 10? You can kind of put a lot of these different pieces of the puzzle together in order to be like, okay, I think I'm going to go after this one or just click funnels 2.0. I know that's a brand name and it's just, you know, there's nothing else going along with it. Probably going to be a little bit tougher to rank for. Maybe I'll pass on that one and so on and so forth. Okay. So Let's go back over here and we can read what it has when it comes to managing results. Once you narrow the list down to the keywords you are interested in, you can move them to target keywords module, hover over any to move it individually or select the keywords in bulk. Right click on selection, move selected keywords to rank tracking. So if that's what we wanted to do, we can find some that we want. So just kind of going very close. What is a click funnel? It's funny how people call it a click funnel. So for example, if I wanted to right click here, we can do start rank tracking, move to group, ungroup, add tags, set color, delete, copy, and of course, select all. And I believe if we hold control, yes, we can select multiple if you wanted to do that. So we have our number of searches. This means if you're looking for ones that have more search volume overall, cool thing about these, a lot of them look like they are buyer intent. Anything that usually like what's, what is a click funnel? It's funny how people still say that. Like what is click funnels? They're, they don't know too much about it. So there's more, I'd say, likely to be able to purchase it because they're asking for more information about it as opposed to like, how do I set up my ClickFunnels membership site? Pretty much stating that they already have it, but they need more help, if you know what I mean. Pricing is another good one. I think I just mentioned previously where they want to know how much it costs before getting started. Review is another great one. For example, aside from reviews, comparisons. So a lot of these are excellent ones. Okay. Lead pages templates. So that could just be an overview. Sometimes people will search for a keyword like that 
you know, before they want to purchase. That happens. And a lot of times people just want to see what type of templates you can utilize or maybe how to find them. So there's a lot of ways that could go either a buyer intent or just someone who already purchased and needs more help. Okay. Let's see what do we have more reviews here, more templates. We have more pricing, pricing, discount code, another big one. That's a, a buyer intent, right? Someone's ready to buy. They want to see if they can get a discount or a coupon code. Okay. So we have, we are, what's it called? We're in these searches here. So we could do the least amount or not added or none. And of course we can go to where they're going to be ranking for them. So they have some featured snippets here. They have some reviews. That's always a good thing. And we can look at also the competition. Once again, competition and keyword difficulty, these are overall going to be a ballpark, but like, so is Thrive Architect free? That could be a good one because when you think about it, someone wants to know if something is free and if it's not, are they necessarily going to buy? You know, maybe, maybe not if they want it bad enough, but just kind of going through here. Funnel Hacking Secrets Review. I don't think that's around anymore, but you know, getting traffic is always a good thing, especially if you have ads or maybe you want to generate leads. So there's a lot to kind of go through. Say something like this. I know System, I don't believe has lifetime anymore, but people still might be searching for it. Obviously, you could answer the question. They don't have it, but they have great pricing. Here's going to be that pricing for you. Or hey, if you're interested in building an online business or utilizing sales funnels, you know, I have a free cheat sheet for you. So that's something to keep in mind. There's a lot of good keywords here, just in this specific example. And just because some might not be super relevant, for example, Black Friday, this happens about once a year, right? <laughs> Last time I checked, unless they come out with a random Black Friday sale that's not on Black Friday, a lot of these are good, even though as long as you satisfy what the user is looking for, give them an answer. And there's always the ability to, you know, maybe generate a lead. And of course, if you're running ads on your website, that's more traffic for you, which is always a good thing, especially when it comes to online business traffic is worth a little bit more right? So that's a good thing. Uh, we also sorted by, so we had searches where they're going to be ranking. We can do the competition. Some's going to be not added. That's fine. And we have a lot of the low ones. So there's low competition and of course, keyword difficulty. So you get kind of two ways of gauging it in terms of a ballpark overview of how difficult it could be to utilize. Okay. So I think that's pretty much going to be it overall. It's a nice little feature, especially like I talked about in the beginning where you want to find a website that's very similar to your overall authority. That way, you know, if they have some ranking keywords, it's going to be much easier for you to outrank them. For example, if a site just started and they haven't built any backlinks yet, you know that pretty much if they're ranking for something, it's most likely because it's an easier to rank keyword. And that's where this can really come in handy. Or what you can also do, if you have a really big authority website and there's a newer up and coming site, so you have a website that's been around for six years and another competitor has been out for six months and they're ranking pretty decently well with no backlinks, you probably know the fact that you have a lot more authority. If you created an article on that, you're probably going to very quickly and easily outrank them, especially if you optimize it, maybe do some interlinking and so on and so forth. But I hope I gave you a lot of ideas when it comes to the keyword gap analysis and process when it comes to SEO Power Suite. You can also utilize this, as I talked about before, with up to five different domains. So you can get a lot of data all at once if that's the way you're looking for it. And that about does it. I will leave that link down below in case you want to check out SEO Power Suite. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. My name is James. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.